Today I'm going to talk to you about antiderivatives. So this is that request of some students of mine from the grade 12 program who've gone to university and said it would be really nice if you did some more advanced, advanced calculus. And so I'm going to do a few videos as I, I find the time. So an antiderivative is just the opposite of taking a derivative. So after all these months of learning how to take derivatives and working with the applications of derivatives, now we're going to take a function and find its antiderivative. In other words, we're going to be moving in the opposite direction. So you have to train your brain to think backwards this time. So there are many applications of antiderivatives and actually you will be calling them integrals. Um, it's an antiderivative is really just an indefinite integral and don't worry too much about the definition of what that is, just that we will be doing all of them as we go along. Okay, so a function, this is a capital F now, is an antiderivative of a function lowercase f on an interval if the derivative of the function is equal to the original function. Okay, so all that says is that I'm going to take some function, I'm going to find its antiderivative, and if I take the derivative of it, I get back to the function. So we'll look at a fir the first three here and do some exercises, and I've got lots of examples, so hopefully it'll give you a really good idea of all the things you need to learn. So if you have your function say you have a zero, the antiderivative of a zero would be a constant because you know that the derivative of two is zero, the derivative of 100 is zero. In other words, if you, if you drew the line y equals two, you would know it has zero slope. So that's what we did before. So if we have a number, a constant like one, the antiderivative of one would be one x. If the function had a two, the antiderivative would be two x because when I take the derivative of this, I get this number. Now, a little bit trickier is if you have a function that has an exponent where n is not equal to negative one, and we'll talk about that in the very next one. The process to find the antiderivative is to add one to the exponent and divide the coefficient of x by n plus 1. Now, just hang on for a sec because I'm going to do an example. Let's go do an example right now so we're not, not getting too confused here. So if this is f at x, I want to know the antiderivative. I'm going to call it f at x. That's capital F. So this one has a power to it. So I'm going to add 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. I'm going to divide the coefficient by 4. That's going to give me 1, and that's going to give me x to the 4th. Now, right away, you can take the derivative, right? If I take the derivative of x to the 4th, I'm going to get 4x cubed. So I know I'm right. Minus 11, the antiderivative of minus 11, any constant, would have had an x after it because I know the derivative of minus 11x is minus 11. Now there's one other thing you have to put in here, and that is that the antiderivative of this could be many things with some value here at the end, which we will call c, constant. So I don't know what this constant is, and in the next lesson we will find um, some initial conditions to the function that will help us to be able to um, evaluate what this is. So for all of the antiderivatives that you do, you will always say plus c. A short um, story about that, I had a student who was an excellent student, and I went on and on during my lessons, don't forget the c, and sure enough, um, he did. He was very disappointed with himself. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Nothing too different um, here. Well, actually, we need to do one other thing here before we can do this one. So let's go back over here to this example here. So if 
you know that the derivative of 1 over x is the ln of x, right? So the ln of x, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Did I say that backwards? Let me say it again. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So you can see this one said where n is not equal to negative 1 because this is really x to the negative 1, right? So it's not going to work for the, this function to find its antiderivative. So that's why I had to say that before we do this one, because take a look here. Let's first of all write these with exponents in the numerator. So this is going to be x to the minus 7 plus x to the minus 5 plus x to the minus 3 plus x to the minus 1. So again, this rule, this rule here of x to the n plus 1 divided by 1 over n plus 1 is not going to work because I have n here is negative 1. So now I'm going to say, okay, what would the antiderivative be? So you add 1 to this. Now make sure when you have a negative number that you make it smaller. Don't. <laughs> it's a common mistake. So I add 1 to minus 7. I get minus 6. I divide by minus 6. So I have minus 1 over 6 x to the minus 6. Okay, now try it. Before you go any further, take the derivative. So minus 6 times minus 1, 6 would be 1x to the minus 7. So there we go. Now this one as well, I add 1, I get negative 4. I'm dividing by negative 4. So I'm going to write minus 1 quarter x to the minus 4. And don't forget, you can always take the derivative of each little step as you go along to make sure you're not making a mistake. So I think you get the idea here. I add 1 goes to minus 2. I divide by 1 over it. So minus 1 half x to the minus 2. And again, I want to make sure you've got the negative here because negative 2 times negative 1 is going to give me plus x to the minus 3. And the last one here, x to the minus 1. And you'll see why this doesn't work because if I add 1 to minus 1, I would get x to the power of 0. And then I would be dividing by 1 over 0. So that's just a, you know, a big no-no in math. So this one is going to be um, ln. So now is it going to be negative ln x or just 1 over x? So you know this is going to be um, ln. So let's say ln x. And if I do the derivative of ln x, I would get 1 over x, which is this. So I don't have a sign change here. This is plus ln x, and finally plus c. Okay, so if you see x to the negative 1, the antiderivative of ln x, because I know the derivative of ln x right here is 1 over x. Now, um, some cases they'll ask you to put in absolute value, but you don't have to for this question. Okay, plus C. So now to number three, I have f at x equals 2x to the minus 3 minus 3x to the minus 2. So let's call this capital F. So I'm doing the antiderivative, and I'm going to add 1 to minus 3. That's minus 2. I'm going to divide by minus 2. So that's going to give me negative x to the minus 2. Now double check. Minus 2 times negative 1 is positive 2x to the minus 3. Always check. This one, I add 1. That's going to give me negative 1. I divide by negative 1. That's going to give me 3 x to the minus 1. So if I do negative 1 times positive, it's going to give me negative 3 x reduced by 1 minus 2. So I'm doing, I'm taking the antiderivative and then I'm checking it by taking the derivative. And don't forget your plus c. Okay, number 4 here. I have f of x equals the square root of negative x. I'm first of all going to write that as f of x equals, in brackets, negative x to the 1 half. 
So when I take the derivative of this or the antiderivative, I add one. So that's going to give me three over two. I divide by three over two. That's going to give me capital F at X. I divide by, uh, sorry, three over two is two over three. So I'm going to have two over three times negative X to the minus three not minus three halves, a positive three halves. We just added one. Mm, mm, mm. Make it neat. Three halves and then plus C. So take the derivative. Three halves times two thirds is one. So I'd have one negative X to the one half. And I have my C. Okay, let's go to some sines and cosines here. Now, you do know that derivative of sine x is cos x, and the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So if I have a function that is cos x, when I take the antiderivative, it's going to be sine of x. Now, also, you have to work with the angle. So it's 1 over k, because remember, if I had, let's say something here, like if I had the sine of 2x, if I took the derivative I would have 2 cos 2x, right? So that's the derivative. If I took the derivative, I'd have 2 cos 2x, so I have to divide by the 2 to make that a 1, and I have to change from um, cos to sine, and sine has to go to negative cos because the derivative of cos is negative, and I would want this one to be positive. Okay, I know it's a little bit confusing, but I think... Just go over it a couple of times and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this one, f at x is going to be equal to, so I had sine 2x, so the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cos, right? Because, so I'm going to have negative 1 over 2 cos 2x. Now, why negative 1 over 2? Take the derivative of cos of 2x. You would have negative First, you'd have negative sine 2x times 2, and that would get me back to this. Okay, so you always have to make sure you're going back to, if you take the derivative, you're going to have what you started with. So 2 cos x, that's just going to be 2 sine x, because the derivative of sine x is cos x. Oh, what did I forget over here? Plus c. Oh, I didn't do that one yet. Here, I thought I'd missed one. I wasn't even done yet, Miss Havrot. Slow down. Okay, so here we go. Now, if you take the derivative, cos 2x goes to negative sine 2x times 2. So that gets me there. Okay, let's look at this one here. So I have 7 cos x minus 11 sine 11x. Okay, so f at x is going to be equal to... Now, this is just a constant in the front. It's easier when it's a constant not affecting the angle. So if I put sine, sine x, the derivative of sine x is cos x, so you don't have to worry about the negative or positiveness of it. So it's just 7 sine x, right? 7 sine x. And this one, this is a minus sign here. So when I do um, the antiderivative of sine x, it has to be negative and 1 over the k. So this is going to be negative times a negative is a positive. And then I'm going to have cos 11x. And I'm not going to write 11 because I'm dividing this by 11. So this gets divided by 11 because when I take the derivative of cos 11x, I would have negative 11 sine 11x. Okay. So watch your signs. So when you go from a sine to a cos, you have to change the sign to positive to adjust for the negative plus C. Okay, I've got a few more on the other side here. Um, oh, e to the x, we didn't look at that. Well, you know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the antiderivative, if I have a function to the kx, I'm going to divide by 1 over k e to the kx. Now take the derivative of this just to help you think backwards for a minute. What's the derivative of e to the x? So e to the kx times k 
and you're back to this one. Okay, so let's go to the e to the x ones. So I have f at x equals, now first of all I have e to the x, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the antiderivative is also e to the x. Now this one, because I have the negative x, I have to divide by negative 1. So it's going to give me plus e to the negative x plus c. So just look at this one here. What's the derivative of e to the negative x? You'd say e to the negative x times negative 1, which takes me back to that answer. Okay, so this one here, f at x. So this is kind of the same thing. So this is going to be pretty easy for you to see. Now maybe you want to stop and try to see if you can get the answer on your own. The antiderivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So you're always checking the derivative of this one to see if you go back there. Now this one I'm going to have to divide by negative 2 and it's a negative so that's going to give me 1 half e to the minus 2x. Okay, take the derivative. The derivative of this would be e to the negative 2x times negative 2, which gets me back there. And the last one here is just going to be 1 third e to the 3x and the whole thing plus c. Okay, so moving right along, we have some radicals now. So what if we have a radical? So f at x. And we have the square root of x, so let's rewrite this as x to the 1 half minus 1 minus x to the half. Okay, so if I calculate the antiderivative now, I'm going to add 1 to 3 halves, to, to 1 half, that's going to give me 3 halves. I divide by 3 halves, that's going to give me 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And again, always a good idea to just quickly take the derivative because you're really so very good at that now. And you would get back to x to the half. And this one, we need to, um, we have negative x inside. Okay, so we've got to watch that because we know that the antiderivative is going to have to change sign of this. So I add 1 to a half, that's 3 halves. I divide by 3 halves, that gives me 2 thirds, 1 minus x to the 3 halves. But also the derivative of the bracket, this negative x in here, would be negative 1. And that means this is going to have to be positive. So when I take the derivative, I would get back to the negative. Plus c. Don't forget the plus c. Okay, and this one, I have 4 over x. Now remember, this is the same thing as 4 times 1 over x. And if you had brought it to the numerator, you'd say, oh, that's the, uh, the ln one because it's to x to the negative 1. This is the whole thing to the negative 1. So this is like 5, five times 1 over 1 minus x, right? I'm just rewriting this in another format to make it more clear. So if I want to find the antiderivative now, I'd say, okay, so this is going to be 4 ln x, constant times the derivative, right? The derivative of ln x would have been 1 over x times 4, which takes me back to that. And this one, this is still 1 over, so this is also the ln. So I have 5. Now, do you know what sign it's going to be? Sign of 1 minus x. Remember when you take the derivative, let, let's write this as, um, if I had this like this, one of 1 minus x, and I asked you to take the derivative, you'd say 1 over 1 minus x times negative 1, right? Because you have to take the derivative of what's in the bracket. So that means I'm going to need to change the sign in here. So 4 ln x minus 5 ln of 1 minus x and plus c. Okay, so what do we have here now? x e to the x squared. Well, you might think, oh, this looks like product rule. 
and it is basically this times this, isn't it? But when I take the antiderivative, if I asked you what is the derivative of e to the x squared, you'd say e to the x squared times 2x. You can see that this x is going to be part of the derivative of the, um, the, the antiderivative. So when I go to do this one, I'm going to say, okay, well, this is e to the x squared. Always just repeat your e's because those are the same. Now, how am I going to get 1x here? If I took the derivative of this, I'd have e to the x squared times 2x. And I don't want 2x. I want it to be 1x. So there's my, my x. I think we had a little rule for it here, e to the x. So e to the kx is 1 over k e to the kx. So that's what, what the, the pattern or rule that we're using. Okay, and number 12 here, f at x is sine squared x cos x. Hmm. Now again, it looks like it might be kind of like, um, like a product rule, but remember that when you take the derivative of a sine function, um, let's say if I asked you what is the derivative of, um, of sine squared x, and you'd say, well, that's, 2 sine x cos x, right? Remember that you had to do exponent and then the function. So I did the exponent, then the function. So this is actually one of these. It's a sine x to some power. Now, because this is squared, you know that this had to be cubed to start with. So remember, you can either write it as sine cubed x or sine of x cubed means the same thing. <coughs> and I think you can see now that if I took the derivative of this, it would be 3 sine x squared times cos x. So there you go. It's, it's much easier. But I don't want 3 here. I want a 1. So I'm going to divide by 3 plus c. Or you can write it like, like this, like 1 third sine cubed x. Remember, this is the same thing as that. And one more for today's lesson, and that's this one down here. I have f at x equals 2x over x squared plus 1. So remember that you can always rewrite the function, and sometimes it's a good idea to do that because it makes, makes it more clear. This is the same thing as 2x times 1 over x squared plus 1, right? That's the same thing. Now this is to the negative 1, so that means we're going to use ln. So I'm going to write f at x equals, so I'm going to say the ln of x squared plus 1. And now just in my head, I'm going to say, okay, well, if I took the derivative of this, I'd have 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. Well, look, I've already got the 2x there. Isn't that lovely? When we do some integrations uh, using u substitutions, this will make this even more clear. But for now, I think if you do a forward and backward check, you'll find that you can do these easier ones all in your head. Okay, so that's a nice introduction for you to antiderivatives. Uh, might be a good idea to just review some of these rules and make sure that you can do these kind of simple ones without getting into something too complicated. Okay, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Only about 30% of those um, who watch my channel are subscribers. And, you know, like, don't unsubscribe when you're done. It doesn't help the channel. And the more subscribers I have, the more visibility the channel gets, which means I can help a lot more people. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and good luck with your uni calculus.